In this video, I'll show you the main differences between ConvertKit and ActiveCampaign. I'm David Cadavy, and I spent several years evaluating email service providers before switching from MailChimp to ActiveCampaign. To give you an idea of my perspective, I have a list of about 35,000, and I sell courses on visual design, and my sales process is mostly automated. You can sign up for ConvertKit at cadavy.net slash ConvertKit, and you can sign up for ActiveCampaign at cadavy.net slash ActiveCampaign. Those are my affiliate links, so I'll be rewarded for the sale if you sign up with either service. It won't cost you anything extra, and it's a good way to thank me for the research and care that I put into this video. So to start, my short recommendations on who should use ConvertKit and who should use ActiveCampaign. If you are an author, and you just want quick and easy email capture, you want to quickly create email courses, I recommend ConvertKit. It's extremely easy to use, as you're going to see. If you're an online marketer, and you want more control and complexity in your automations, I recommend ActiveCampaign. You can geotarget, you can send according to the user's local time zone, you can build just about any automation you can imagine. But as you'll see, it's more complex to work with. If you have a high-touch sales process, you may prefer ActiveCampaign, specifically their small business or enterprise plans, which both have a CRM for lead scoring and triggering notifications to your sales team to follow up on leads. And if you just want to send out the occasional email blast and you don't care about powerful automations and or you are very concerned about having attractive email templates for your emails, I don't think that ConvertKit nor ActiveCampaign are for you. Instead, I'd recommend MailChimp. Now, ConvertKit and ActiveCampaign are both great services. It depends upon what your wants and needs are. Now, what's great about ConvertKit? They have built-in lead capture pages. ConvertKit has customizable and very attractive landing pages for capturing leads. You can save some money by not having a lead pages account. ConvertKit has more versatile forms. They have uh, more options in their form builder than ActiveCampaign does. You can even have your forms as uh, popovers. You might be able to avoid getting a Sumo subscription. Built-in email sequences. To create something like ConvertKit's sequences on ActiveCampaign, you have to manually create an automation, which is a cumbersome process compared to ConvertKit's sequence builder, which you'll see in a bit. ConvertKit also has an easy-to-use editor for simple emails. ConvertKit makes it very easy to compose plain emails, which is my preference, very plain emails. They have a drag-and-drop interface for adding and uploading images, and they don't have templates with lots of fancy design options, but again, that's my preference. And here's what's great about ActiveCampaign. ActiveCampaign has an extremely powerful automation builder. It's drag and drop, and you can build about any automation you can imagine with it. It's visual, so you can see exactly what you're building. It alone is why I chose ActiveCampaign. However, I spend a lot of time thinking of and building automations, and the complex automation builder could actually be to your detriment because you can wind up spending too much time building automations. ActiveCampaign has more email templates. I personally prefer to use the plainest email template possible, but if you want many design options for email templates, ActiveCampaign does beat ConvertKit considerably. ActiveCampaign has a Gmail extension. Sometimes people from your list will reply to your emails, and with ActiveCampaign's Gmail extension, you can view all of that person's information in your sidebar. On the small business and enterprise plans, you can update the status of any deals associated with the contact, such as, are you still in talks? Did you win the account? Did you lose it? Etc. ActiveCampaign has a built-in CRM. And now this is just on the small business and enterprise plans. If you do any sort of high-touch sales, ActiveCampaign is the clear choice. You can bring leads into your email campaigns and score those leads based upon links clicked and emails opened. You can then automatically alert your sales team of the hot lead, and they can call them or email them close to the sale. ActiveCampaign has SMS marketing. This is just on the small business and enterprise plans. If you want to send a discount code to a customer, if you want to alert a sales agent on their mobile to follow up on a hot lead, you can do it with SMS marketing. Now, let's 
not so great about ConvertKit and ActiveCampaign. Uh, keep in mind that e uh, ESPs are a bit like spouses. No matter who you choose, there's going to be something that drives you up the wall. It's good to be aware up front what those quirks might be. So with ConvertKit, ConvertKit has simplistic automations. Uh, the, their automations are very simple. There are triggers and actions to cover most needs, but nowhere near the customization of Active Campaign's automation. Um, again, this could be an asset preventing you from wasting time building overly complex automations. ConvertKit has limited segmentation options. If you plan events and you want to geo-target your email campaigns, you can't do that with ConvertKit. You also can't filter just by link clicks in past campaigns. You have to have the foresight ahead of time to set up tracking on any campaigns that you might want to use to build segments later. Now, what's not so great about ActiveCampaign? ActiveCampaign has a very clunky email editor. ActiveCampaign has the worst email editing experience of any service that I have ever tried. So why do I put up with it? because their automations are so powerful. It requires some upfront investment, but I can set it and forget it. ActiveCampaign has a slow interface. In fact, this is the slowest interface of any service of any kind that I've ever used. Searching contacts to create segments is incredibly slow on ActiveCampaign. This makes email cre creation cumbersome, but I'm willing to with live with it for their automations. Now here is how ConvertKit and ActiveCampaign work. I'll show you my actual setup in ActiveCampaign, and I'll show you what I would do in ConvertKit to try to get similar results. As you can see, I have quite a few lists on ActiveCampaign. My main list is designed for hackers. And here's an automation I use to capture emails from Sumo. Sumo integrates with ActiveCampaign. It puts emails into this list, and then this automation adds some information to let me know where it came from and then it adds the contact to my main design for hackers list. That sumo automation also adds a design pitfalls tag which it signs up the contact for my course design pitfalls which you see here on the design for hackers homepage. Notice that there's a countdown timer to sign up for the course and that's because there's a deadline to sign up every Friday night. I have a welcome automation for this course. Every Friday it sends out one last email to everyone who has signed up for the course and starts uh, and that, that course starts the following Monday and then that email that, that goes out on Friday encourages them to share the course before the deadline happens. And here's the course itself. You can see I have various emails here and I use ActiveCampaign's drag and drop interface to put in little blocks that control what days each email is sent on. And you can see that I have those emails set at 9 a.m. based upon the contacts time zone. So that doesn't make or break my business, but it likely results in a sli slightly hope higher open rate to have it based on the contacts time zone. Now ConvertKit has one list. so. I'll I don't need to show you that, but there are the landing pages they have available for capturing leads, and you can easily customize these landing pages if you like. ConvertKit also has many customizable forms. ActiveCampaign, of course, has forms too, but they aren't as versatile. You can see with ConvertKit, you can even create a modal form. If I wanted to recreate my Design Pitfalls course in, in a ConvertKit sequence, it would be really easy. I could easily switch between emails in the sequence. I could drag them around if I wanted. I could set my welcome email to send on any given day. I could set my sharing email to go out only on Fridays. Then I could set my individual lessons to only go out on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And I was actually surprised to discover this because I swear last time I checked there was no way to make it work, but apparently it's incredibly easy. I could make pretty much my identical email course on ConvertKit if I wanted. I can also set preferences for the sequence as a whole, restricting the day of delivery at the sequence level. I can set the time of day for sending. No ability to make it based upon the user's time zone, but that probably doesn't make that big of a difference. I can also change the email template for all the emails in the sequence, 
with a single drop down menu, and I certainly can't do that on Active Campaign. Now, when a contact finishes my design pitfalls course, they go to a sale sequence for my D4H video course. This automation is triggered when a tag is added at the end of the course. Once they're done with that automation, they then end up in another automation. This one sends them some content from my archives. At the end of this automation, they're then added to another automation that promotes another course of mine called White Hot Course. And this goes on for a while with one automation triggering another. Now let's see how this would work in ConvertKit. At the end of my Design Pitfalls course, I could add a tag to the subscriber. And adding that tag could then trigger another automation. And I could string together automations just like I do in Active Campaign. Notice that ConvertKit doesn't have a visual drag and drop editor for automations like Active Campaign does. For me, the drag and drop visualization is very important. I just have a hard time thinking of how my various sequences work sometimes, and it really helps to be able to see it. In fact, Active Campaign's visual editor is what made me choose them because I had tangled up my brain so much just trying to figure out how to get the automations to work, the ones that I had built in MailChimp, which doesn't have a drag and drop editor either. Now, this is how I keep my email list clean. I don't want inactive subscribers on my email list. They're more likely to report spam. They'll ruin your email reputation. So you're more likely to end up in the spam folder for people who actually really do want your email. This automation checks periodically to see if a contact has been opening emails, if they've opened an email recently. Uh, if not, it adds a tag that indicates how long it's been since they opened an email. And if they do open an email, this automation here removes any relevant tags that they might have and starts them over. Now, if someone hasn't opened an email for six months, they end up in this automation. This sends a series of emails asking if they still want my emails. And they can click to say yes, or they can click another link to let them know they don't use, to let me know that they don't use tracking. And that will tag them so I don't bother them again. If after a few weeks they haven't clicked on a confirmation link, they get unsubscribed and I send out one last email notifying them. Now in ConvertKit, they have something called cold subscribers. These are subscribers who haven't opened an email in the past 90 days. If you wanna check in with your cold subscribers, you have to manually create a broadcast email and the appropriate automation. If you do some Googling, you'll find the details if that interests you. So with Active Campaign, you have more control over what you consider to be an inactive subscriber, how long of them not opening emails before you consider them inactive, and you can automate the process of cleaning your list. Again, it's much more complicated than working with ConvertKit, but it is set it and forget it. Now to actually create an email. On Active Campaign, this is called a campaign. I name my campaign, then I choose my list, then I create my segment if I want. You can see I have many options for creating a segment. I can filter by geographic location or activity on previous campaigns, just to name a couple. Now I choose my template. I made my own bare bones template because I like to send simple emails. And for this template, I can either code in HTML or I can switch to their visual editor which is really a terrible editor. I think it's pieced together from some sort of an open source project. And if I want to add an image, there's no drag and drop. I have to select through the file system. Now I have a different email template that supports their drag and drop editor on Active Campaign, And this editor really is just as bad. Uh, for example, if I want to add an image in the middle of the text, I can't do that. Instead, I have to copy some of my text make another text box, and then I can drag an image block in between those two text blocks. And I still have to use the same clunky image manager I did in the other editor. On ConvertKit, as usual, it is much simpler. I don't have many filtering options. I can filter by segment, I can filter by forms, sequences, and tags. Uh, getting to start writing the email is quicker. The image support isn't fantastic, but it at least supports drag and drop. MailChimp, by the way, has the best image support that I've seen. I could choose a template different from the account default if I wanted, but I won't. 
I can preview and send. So, there you have an introduction to the features of ConvertKit and ActiveCampaign. As you can see, ConvertKit is much easier to use. However, its functionality is limited. ActiveCampaign, on the other hand, is more customizable and more cumbersome. Now, I didn't get into the features of the small business and enterprise levels of ActiveCampaign. Features like SMS marketing, lead scoring, or the CRM. If you have a business that needs features like that, or you think that you might need them in the future, then there's really no contest and ActiveCampaign is the choice for you. I won't get too much into price as their price varies similarly and really price should be way down on the list of what you're thinking about when choosing an email service provider. You have to pick something that works for you and your business. If you want to check out the pricing and other features, you can get a free trial of ActiveCampaign at Catavy.net slash active campaign. You can also sign up for ConvertKit at Catavy.net slash ConvertKit. And if you don't like ConvertKit, they currently have a 30-day refund policy. So you can just try it and request a refund. And that would be my advice. If you're on the fence with between these two email service providers, sign up for both, play around with them a bit, and then decide from there. Again, I'm David Catavy, and I hope you found this comparison useful.